nothing for me. This life is not my own. I know you go before me, and I am not alone. This mountain rises higher. The way seems so unclear. noticed uh, our band is different this week. They're not from the Wayback Machine or anything like that. Those are actual children up there, so, um, and youth. Uh, so we, uh, so we give joy. I think that there's like 13 of them up there. They've been practicing since the end of January uh, for today, and they're excited to, to share this music with you. And we gathered up some kids, because they're going to they're gonna come in with us right now, and uh, they're going to sing two of our VBS songs for us up front. So why don't we, uh, it's, uh, and it's Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, let's begin.
and we're going to do this a little out of order. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Why don't you uh, share God's peace? We'll send these children back to their seats for a minute or two here. Seated so they Wait, what's the prayer song again? Um, oh, he knows my name. He knows my name. Why don't you have a seat? We got one more song for our opening uh, set okay. here that these children have prepared. Um, and we'll start that with a prayer. Holy and gracious God, good shepherd, we give thanks that you lead us from the tiniest lambs to the oldest of youth, all to your glory as we walk right, right paths that lead to a goodness that's beyond our imagination. Amen. Amen.
King David before. He is a shepherd. He's also the king of, no, the king of Israel, right? Remember, we talked about him. Palm Sunday, we talked about King David. He was the king of Israel a long time ago. But before he became king, he was a, a shepherd. So we have King David up here. He was a shepherd, and a shepherd doesn't have a very glamorous job.
joy ringers and we're going to take an offering while they give us this while they share this gift
The Lord my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Gospel according to St. John. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Many of you uh, have been to a, a funeral here at Messiah, and if you had, then you know that we start every funeral the same way here at Messiah. We start by reading the psalm. We start in the back of the church and we have a crucifer. Jim Henson around motor do that usually for us. And uh, they bring in the urn. Someone carries that or, 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 or leads the coffin in. And we read behind the cross the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil so that my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my life entire long. That psalm is beautiful and it's full of words of hope. Hope that people long to hear on this day where they're burying someone that they love so greatly. And it's about hope that lasts not just for this moment but for an entire lifetime. It makes sense that we read that psalm. But you know, it also makes sense that we read that psalm while we're moving while we're coming in to the sanctuary because the whole psalm is full of all these movement words. Makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in right paths. I, even though I walk through the darkest valleys, leads, leads, walks, follows, lies. It's about the movement from death to heaven. But it's also about our daily movements in our life every single day that we go on. How are we going to move through this life following that good shepherd? So one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, pastors in town, actually a good friend, Al Debelak, is a pastor at Redeemer over in Whitehall. And uh, we were at a group and he was telling me that when he hears the psalm, he always thinks of four-year-olds is what he's thinking of and he he said because he was in Seattle a few years ago and and his hotel was right across the street 
from this coffee shop. I mean, we're in Seattle. That makes sense, right? And, 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 and it's, there is a, a preschool at one end of the block and the coffee shop at the end of the block. And every morning at the same time, these group of four-year-olds would come walking down the sidewalk from their preschool to the coffee shop. Not to get a, a shot of espresso or anything like that. They had cookies and, and punch and that sort of thing out for him. It was a deal they had made, obviously, with this coffee shop. But in order to walk a group of four-year-olds down the street in downtown Seattle, right, that's a, that's a big undertaking. So they would have a good shepherd at the front of the line, right, and then they would tie the kids together with colorful rope as they led them and dragged them down to that coffee shop. And, it, and Al said, that reminds me of the church, right? I mean, we're we're all going to a place we really want to go, <laughs> but we, sometimes we got to be tied together by the church and dragged there to get there. I like that image. I, 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 can, I can work with that image. I mean, I often think that the only way we're ever going to move a congregation somewhere else is to tie them together and, and pull them along. And it works not just for four-year-olds. It works for senior citizens, too. Come to... Come to our Senior Saints Choir practice at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning and, and watch our, our good shepherd, Barb Teague, try to get these um, 25 or so senior citizens pulled in the right direction through 90 minutes of uh, practice. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good. And what we true about the psalm is not just that we move through life following this good shepherd, pulled along, tied together, but that that life is full of green pastures and still waters and darkest valleys and tables of enemies. Our life is going to be full through good times and bad times. And when we send those four-year-olds out on the downtown streets of Seattle, right, we, we want to keep them safe from traffic and malicious strangers. Strangers. And when we get sent out into this world to live full of the results of our own bad decisions or the bad decisions of others, God promises to find a right path for us. And we always think that whenever we're in the midst of trouble that we're on a wrong path, and I don't think that's necessarily true. I think there's a, a right path that God has for us every day of our life as long as we stay following that shepherd with sheep on either side of us, to the right or to the left. Because the trick for that preschool, right, is, is two things. To have a really good leader that knows where they're going and a really strong rope to keep all those sheep together. And so the, the trick for our life through the midst of our celebrations and through the uh, the darkest days by bad luck or bad choices <clears throat> is to follow a really good leader, Jesus, our good shepherd, and to make sure that to the right and to the left of us and behind and in front of us are sheep that are going to the same place. And we all move through this together then. We all move through this together. And this was lifted up to me by, I was reading a blog by a, a, a Hebrew scholar. And she wrote on her blog this week that the word for path that's used in, in the Bible is a Hebrew word that's related to cows and oxen. And that usually it's translated as ruts or grooves. And the idea in, in that word is that when cows leave their stable every day and, and they go out to the green pastures to eat, right? All four hooves of them, the 10,000 pounds that a cow weighs, and then they walk back at the end of the day to their stable, and then the next day they do the exact same thing, and then they walk, and then they walk back at the end of the day. And not just one cow, but, you know, the whole stable full of cows are doing that. What happens to that muddy path, right? It gets grooved with all the weight and all the hooves going down back and forth, beating its way back and forth. And that's the idea in this, that, <clears throat> that the right path that God has in store for us is a rut, something we can rely on to follow every day of our life, every day of our unique lives. And, and I have trouble following 
people, right? I mean, I'm, I'm trouble following people. I need a choker chain at times, right, to get me going in the right direction. But ruts, I can do ruts. I'm all about ruts. I eat the same breakfast every morning of my life, six out of seven days a week. I, I get out a bowl, I pour in Raisin Bran Crunch, three quarters full, and I put in a half a cup of milk, and that's what I eat. In fact, when I run out of Raisin Bran Crunch and I don't notice it until six o'clock in the morning when I'm making my breakfast, I consider running to the store and getting some, even though I got all sorts of other choices. And the only morning I don't eat Raisin Bran Crunch every week is Thursday morning when I go to Marie Scrambler's uh, with the men's Bible study here, about 12 or so guys, and they don't have Raisin Bran Crunch in Marie Scrambler's. I, I can do ruts. I find joy in, in, in ruts and peace in doing the same thing, that, that familiarity. God is encouraging us to get in a rut. You know, when those preschool kids leave that uh, preschool, uh, they don't go this way and that way, and today let's try getting to the coffee shop this way. Ever try that with a four, group of four-year-olds? Uh-uh. You go the same way, same time, every day. Right? And, and so we said the most important thing is, is that we have a good leader for that group and a strong rope. It's also that we have a clear path, <laughs> one that people know and they can rely on in the midst of their journey. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> maybe it's not just the leader, Jesus, that we're following. Maybe it's not just the sheep that are all around us. Maybe a piece of the story of following those right paths that Psalm 23 is talking about is knowing the space where God is calling us home to again and again and again. And now let's go back to that funeral. Right? Maybe it even makes more sense that when we begin a funeral, celebrating a life lived in Christ, we are walking down the same, the center aisle. As we say the psalm, as we remember this life, as we give thanks for Christ, Maybe this center aisle right here is the rut, the right path that God has in mind. You know, this center aisle in this church or this center aisle in the thousands of other churches that are out there, maybe this center aisle is that path that God is calling you to. Just think about it. How many times this center aisle has called you to Christ? Listen to all the times I could think of for my life. When I was a month old, this center aisle brought me up at Augsburg Lutheran Church to be baptized. When I was uh, third grade, this center aisle welcomed me as I was part of a children's choir that would march in and sing. When I was in seventh grade, this center aisle held me as I was an acolyte that would come forward down the aisle to light those candles. When I was in eighth grade, this center aisle welcomed me as I came to the front of the church to take ownership of my faith and confirmation. When I was in 10th grade, this center aisle welcomed me as I preached my first sermon from the pulpit at a children's Sunday a lot like this. When I was 19 and 20, this center aisle welcomed me as I took my 90-year-old grandmother to church every Sunday throughout college because she was grieving the loss of my grandfather. When I was 25, this center aisle welcomed me as we buried grandma and led her coffin up the center aisle. When I was 20 years old, the center aisle welcomed me as I was married in the church. The center aisle welcomed me as I brought my children forward for baptism. This center aisle will welcome me as I bring my grandchildren forward for baptism. This center aisle has welcomed me when I've become an ordained pastor. This is the aisle I walked down. When I became the pastor here, this is the aisle that I walked down to be installed as pastor. When I came back from sabbatical, after three months off, it was this center aisle full of your smiling faces, happy to see me back, that welcomed me. When I grieve the loss of someone I have fell in love with over these last 12 years of being your pastor, and we bring them down this center aisle, this center aisle is what gives me hope 
I keep my eye on Jesus in those moments. And on the last day of my life, I'll come down this center aisle. This center aisle is not just about this moment in time and about the sheep that are gathered here right now. This center aisle has been made a deep rut and groove by the millions and millions of sheep that have walked down it for two millennia. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes right paths for me to walk down. The psalm is not only appropriate as a song for our funerals, it's appropriate for the songs of our lives. Because the psalm encourages us to follow the good shepherd, to pay attention to the sheep that are to the left and to the right of us in front and behind us. And as we walk our unique paths, determined by who we are, where we're born, what gifts we're given, who our parents are, what choices we've made, what choices people have made, all of those make for a unique me. As we walk those unique paths, may we make them right by getting in a rut and walking down this center aisle where God calls us every week to come down with our hands out to receive the Good Shepherd, the Lamb of God, Jesus, our Savior. This aisle is the rut that God hopes all of us find ourselves in. Amen. We stand for our prayers. As our children bring forward our bread and our wine, we'll ask God to bless and be present. May we pray for ourselves pray for the church and the world and for everyone according to their needs. May the Good Shepherd keep his promise and come here today and bless us with his presence. Let's pray. Good Shepherd, you know each and every one of our names. Help us hear the call that you give us. Help us stick close to each other in the midst of this life full of good times and bad times, celebrations and darkest days. And then help us get into a rut, come into you every week with our hands out to receive this good gift of your presence. For in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. He gave it to all his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and he blessed that and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a sign of the covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of faith. That Christ is dead. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come, Lord Jesus. And make this bread and wine holy and special with your presence. May your spirit be upon it so that it becomes upon us. And come, Holy Spirit, and bring healing to all those in this room that need healing today, especially those in operations this week, those grieving the loss of someone they love, whose hearts are broken. For those battling cancer or other chronic diseases, 
for all those names that we say aloud now. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your presence so we can go out and share the good news following the right paths with our brother and sisters next to us that our good shepherd has called us and made us his own. Amen. Let's pray as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We've got some visitors here today. Let me assure you that this isn't a Lutheran meal. This is God's meal, and everyone is invited to God's table. So come and eat and enjoy the presence of God. We're going to commune our assistants first if they'd come out here. Assistants? <laughs> I think we've got high school kids coming. Two? <laughs> We needed a big colorful rope. There we go. Pull them in here. There we go. <laughs> if you are visiting today and you're wondering how we take communion, we do it by intinction, which means we dip the bread into the wine, taking them both at the same time. Um, the body of Christ given for you. Come and eat. All will be served. So dearly that I, the guilt. 
love of Christ shall flow like rivers come wash your guilt away live again amazing love oh what's that Son of God, given for me, my daddy pays, and my daddy died, that I, I might live, that I, I might live, I'm The Son of God, even for me, my daddy pays, and my death he dies, that I am my body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord, fed by your love, may we go out and share the good news of a place where we've been called where we can be sheep, following our good shepherd who's filled us with love. Amen. As you wear another rut on this center aisle this week to go and be God's people in the world, a couple of uh, things to keep in mind. One, give thanks for all those uh, that worked on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to make our chicken noodle dinner uh, a, a, a good success, uh, especially Suzanne Schman and Joanne Saffo that, that uh, headed it all up and the people that were there all day uh, Saturday and the people who came and, and got food uh, too. All, all good stuff. 
Uh, we'll know next week how much money we raised for Hart, but it'll, it'll go to good use, so I give thanks for that. Tomorrow's our senior lunch bunch. We do that every month. Uh, they're going to uh, Pizza Cottage, which is unusual for them, which is in Pickerington at noon. So, um, so if you want to go and get good pizza with uh, good people, uh, noon at Pickerington Pizza Cottage. Lift that up. Wednesdays, we're on our last uh, four or so Messiah nights. Uh, Chef Marty is in the room here. He's taking requests for what you want him to make these last four weeks. So he can do anything. So just tell him what you want, and he'll have it for you on Wednesday night. Uh, come, we've got all sorts of good adult things going on. A, a great marriage building class that's happening right now. We've also got a grief group that's meeting. I'm teaching new members. Um, and uh, we've got Bible buzzwords. There's a larger class that's been going on in Fritz Hall. Good stuff. The um, Saturday's a busy day here at the church. Not only do we have a 50th anniversary renewal uh, for Jim and Linda Cochran here in the sanctuary and reception afterwards, but out in the parking lot, youth are gonna be uh, delivering mulch that day and they need more truck drivers, uh, people with trucks, that is not people with CDL licenses, but people with trucks. So if you got pickup trucks and you can come and help, talk to Jim Dean, you don't necessarily even have to move any mulch, you know, if you can drive, we can throw a couple uh, strong, healthy youth in there and do that. So Jim Dean's right here. Talk to him about that if you can help out that day. Thanks for buying that mulch too for everybody. Messiah Day is uh, at Joseph Code and Furniture. is also on Saturday morning. And I need a few more uh, men volunteers for that. I, I organize uh, that once a month on Saturday mornings. If you haven't worked uh, at the furniture ministry for a while or you'd like to for the first time, Give me a call, I'm gathering up. I need about five names right now for that. And then Saturday afternoon is, Hart's, is Messiah's Day at Hart, the food pantry we support. And uh, we're gathering people for that and I still need a few more people to help out with uh, that day. So, um, so a lot going on on Saturday and we're all gonna meet up at Rings and Rings to eat wings and drink beer afterwards. There's an error in our bulletin, Joseph's coat Golf outing is June 14th, not June 21st. So if you're marking your calendars, mark it for June 14th for that good event. What are you guys, you guys singing? All right? Okay, so let's do our blessing. Everyone stand up before we leave. Okay, all you singers right there, hold your hands like this. There you go. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.
risen. It's risen and let's say thanks to our children and youth that sang for us today. And our uh, children's minister, Alicia, has got a candy buffet for all the kids that are here today. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And next week, amen. Some days life feels perfect, other days you try to stay wild. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong, everything in between. And it's crazy, amazing, you turn our heart with the words we say. Mountains crumble with every syllable, hope can live or die. Speak life, speak life, to the dead and stark Imagine words from our lips and the arms of compassion Mountains tremble every 